Hello friends, welcome back. Started off this war, war number five, by forgetting to take the screenshots of our placement and uh, the alliance we're fighting, so we'll skip that part for now. Going in with the uh, trusty trio today. Uh, we're still at the mid to the top of Platinum 4, so... Alright, so I'm taking lane 7 in section 1 today. Um, the guy that usually takes this path for us uh, ghosted us for like 24 hours. Uh, we couldn't wait any longer, so I was designated as backup and uh, decided to just go in and, without waiting any longer. So, had an Iceman on here. The, the Scouter Lens tool that I use uh, was actually uh, on 100% for all three of these fights. Um, and you may be asking yourself why I didn't go in with um, with Warlock, who is Cold Snap immune, and I wouldn't have taken that uh, damage at the start of the fight. Uh, the reason for that is that I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't completely confident that the scouter tool was right, um, so I decided to go in uh, with Void for the direct damage over time. This is the breakthrough node. Uh, and typically, people might put somebody here who uh, would be you know a good choice in that node, like a Man Thing, for example, or a Doom. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I had a way to damage over time that champion, but. Uh, Either way, you know, it didn't take much cold snap damage. All right, uh, next up, this is a max rank, max sig Korg on uh, bubble shield, I think it is. So every 10 hits, the next hit, or every 10 blocked hits, the next hit is guaranteed unblockable. Uh, and if you fought Korg, especially the way I fight Korg, um, baiting out heavy attacks, um, you're, you're guaranteed to be taking a lot of blocked hits. So you can see I boosted up my health there. Uh, I put on an invulnerability boost, anticipating that I was going to have to take blocked hits and eventually uh, have to take like a real hit. So this Korg, however, uh, is actually pretty forthcoming. You know, only a couple hits before his first heavy. I back off. He cooperates. I get the intercept in, uh, and then from here, I'm going to use the uh, special one from him to get another in. Rather, now normally I would try and push into his SP2 by baiting out another heavy attack, uh, but I don't really have the, the luxury there. Once his shield is shattered, I'm going to go for the parries, as you can see. Um, and then here is where I'm going to be pushing him all the way up to his uh, special 2 and getting another in that way. Um, so there's been a lot of talk recently about the Namor nerf, I guess if you want to call it one. Um, I don't think much is going to be changing uh, in terms of how I use him in war. He's going to be more valuable in shorter fights uh, because the bleeds will be proccing more often. Um, it does kind of suck that the Imperious Rex will be harder to come by. Um, but in matchups where you're fighting a bleed immune, like so specifically against Korg is where I use Namor most often, uh, nothing is going to change with how Namor is used. Uh, and that they are not touching his SIG uh, is pretty much means that he's going to have all the utility that he still does. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about it. All right, so we finished off the Korg with that SP1 or 2 and uh, moving on. So normally the guy on Path 9 takes this fight. However, the Scouter Lens tool said that it was a max rank Havoc, uh, which is one of the champs that he doesn't have a counter for. So I decided to go in and Scouter Tool 3 for 3 today. So this is uh, Aegis Heavy. Uh, now Warlock's heavy only has one hit event, so I need to bait out uh, four different heavies and then counter with my own heavy, and then we can kind of start the fight proper, as it were. Uh, I thought I was going to mistime that SP1. Uh, luckily, I lucked out there and uh, and dodged all all three blasts there. So, all right, now the fight has started for real, uh, but we've built up our power enough that we can get an almost instant SP2, and you can just look at the damage from. Uh, from the armor breaks there. Um, I, I, I still am a firm believer that um, Warlock in war is so useful uh, because of the way that he interacts with using willpower. Uh, and nearly everybody in war uses willpower, um, especially when you combine that with Resonate. Uh, you can have just near constant power drain on people. Uh, and the more debuffs, unique debuffs they have, the more the, the faster their power is draining. So it's it's really really useful. All right, I think this is our first uh, mini boss action of the season. This is a Killmonger on Aggression Fury. Uh, our opponents are running Siphon, so um, I have to be kind of wary of block damage on the parries. 
Uh, in addition, uh, you're going to see me push him to uh, his SP2 more often. And I realize that that kind of works against me because I'm, I'm going to be taking, uh, he's going to be taking no damage on three of my next five hits. However, um, I was concerned that the contact made from his, um, his when he throws the swords from his SP1, uh, typically I have to block one uh, of those. It's rare that I can get both of them uh, dodged. Um, and I didn't want to feed into that that block um, block uh, penetration thing that he has going for him from the node. So um, yeah, I'm comfortable dodging the SP2, uh, just kind of having to deal with the the indestructible charges. And I make a little bit of a mistake here. You'll see coming up um, in that I launch my first SP3 when he still has one of those right here. So he still has two of the indestructible charges up. So. Uh, this SP3 is actually going to do no damage to him, uh, which is fine because its purpose is really to get the Fury passive for me and then set me up for my my next one, which is going to happen right here. So second SP2, he doesn't have the uh, he doesn't have the indestructible charges up anymore, so this is going to do a nice chunk of damage. Um, and then I make another little mistake in that I, I wait too long to bait out or for him to come in. Uh, so right there, I should have launched my SP2. I don't. Uh, and then I wait just a little bit too long, and I don't get the SP2 off. I only get an SP1 off. Um, so now I kind of have to uh, just hope and pray that I don't get hit before the end of the fight. So I've got plenty of time left, and there we go. So uh, all in all, a pretty clean fight, no problem. All right, up on t section two here, we got a champion. On uh, we're still we're back on the challenger map, so this is just masochism. Uh, considered going in here with Void, uh, but he's one of the champions of the universe, so decided just to go in with Warlock. Um, now, one thing I noticed during this fight is that so he doesn't go unstoppable once during this fight, and I think that's in part because Warlock Special Two has so many hits that it's easy to kind of remove his persistent charges. So the champion works like every 13 to 15 seconds, he gets a persistent charge and that's what feeds into the Furies and the Unstoppable. However, if you, every 20 hits on your hit counter, you remove one of those uh, persistent charges. So because Warlock Special 2 has so many hits to it, uh, it's kind of really easy to cycle through, you know, 20 hits, 20 hits, 20 hits. So he's not really, getting above one persistent charge at any point and when he's at zero there's no chance for him to gain the fury or gain the unstoppable um so i kept kind of waiting for it you know my, i'm i've trained myself to kind of watch for the the primal fury text uh and then back off immediately but uh he doesn't gain it once and uh yeah so that that ends up being a, a pretty easy fight all right next up we have a mysterio on buffet and recovery and indomitable uh, again, going to go in with Warlock, going to heal him up to uh, close to full here. Um, I underestimated the amount of block damage that I was going to take from this this encounter. Uh, this person was running suicide, so uh, I was pretty confident that I would be able to get through this fight without Mysterio throwing a single special attack. You know, once I get the infection up, uh, he was going to start power draining from the the suicide bleeds, from the resonate mastery, from the parry stun. Uh, etc etc so once I get uh, once I get the armor breaks up the power drain just goes goes crazy <laughs> so you can see you know I'm not you know it, it's barely keeping up with how how fast I'm giving him power from hitting him so uh, now we're basically just gonna do parry heavy and you can see every time I'm, I'm parrying I'm taking like two or three percent of my health um, you know I'm okay with that because it's better than you know, fighting Mysterio normally, dealing with his annoying damage reflection mechanic. Uh, if I can keep him below that one bar of power, no special attacks, I don't have to worry about it. So uh, again, that ends up kind of being a pretty easy fight with Warlock, as most fights with Warlock are. Um, so, all right, next up we have an Elsa Bloodstone, also on Buffet. Um, also kind of went back and forth on who to use here. Um, you can bleed. Uh, Elsa safely with a mutant, so Namor would have been an okay option here. Um, I ended up again going with Warlock just because you know the the heal blocking is so much easier with him. Um, I don't know that I've ever actually fought an Elsa in war before. This might be a 
first. I, I can't think of one. Um, so her special one is pretty easy to dodge. You definitely don't want to push her to her special two. Uh, and I also cannot be using my, my parry heavy trick with her because if you bleed her with somebody who is not a mutant, then she will apply this crazy degen to you. Um, it actually also works uh, coincidentally on defense. So if you run suicides with Elsa, your opponent will start degenerating immediately when the fight starts, which is a little unfair, uh, I think, but, you know... There are there are the long list of things that are unfair about this game, and not, nothing's gonna be done about them. So, so nail her with another special two. I think we uh, back off before she throws her last SP one, and down she goes. So, a um, little bit of block damage there. I think I did take a hit when she shrugged off a parry stun uh, immediately. So just some some unlucky timing for me, uh, but it ended up not costing me too much. All right, last but not least, this is an R2 six-star Mr. Sinister. So, yeah, somebody R2 to Mr. Sinister <laughs> and put them on this node. Um, Going to go in here with Void, uh, as I typically do on this node. Again, uh, this node has Strike Back, so when I get the Petrified debuffs up, not only am I going to be limiting and eventually stopping his regeneration, I'm also going to be eliminating and eventually um, reversing his power gain from strike back so you know, Mr. Sinister also a villain uh, so you see I put on a combat regen boost at the start of the fight uh, just to kind of keep myself topped up from the initial block damage once I get into a comfortable cycle of him throwing specials and me countering I won't have to take as many blocked hits or many parries um, so I wasn't too worried about the fight once it kind of got into the swing of things. Uh, but the outset of the fight, when I needed to take some parries just to get my, my ends, um, I didn't want to waste too much of my health in, in chip damage there. So, Alright, so I should have gone in there when he heavied. I'm not really sure why I didn't. We've got one Petrify up, so I can more or less safely use my specials here. Uh, it's actually, I think, preferable... Um, to to play with the strike back node rather than uh, just counter it completely um, you know you still do have to take some blocked hits some parries um, so maybe you know warlock probably would have been just as effective I would have just been have to been extra careful to only throw his sp2 um, when sinister was at pretty much empty power uh, in order to prevent him from getting to that sp2 for himself so all right, so we're about halfway through the timer, and uh, the fight is going really well. I've got one Fear of the Void up. Debuffs are cycling. Um, I'm really just kind of getting into a good rhythm here with this fight. Um, he is being pretty cooperative with his special attacks for the most part. We've got a short window of uh, two Fear of the Voids. I think I get one, so I got well a full combo in with two, two attack bonuses, so that was pretty nice. <clears throat> And uh, no healing from then either, so that was that was good. So you know, time ticking away, um, time ticking away, his health ticking away from the degen. Yeah, and uh, he's gonna go down here shortly without too much problem. So at this point, I've got reversal on strike back, so it doesn't really matter because he's about to just plop over, and there he goes. So, so all in all, a uh, a really solid war for me. Uh, Two deaths last time, no deaths today. Not a lot of potion use, um, which was a bit surprising considering how much I, um, how much, how many nodes or how many fights I had today. Um, what else did I want to say about this war? It was really, really close at the end. Um, I think we only lost by maybe five or six uh, attack bonuses. So yeah, really close. Um, Made some changes in the alliance after the war was over, uh, so hopefully we are better prepared for the next one. It would be really nice to finish out this season with uh, with a winning record, or at least go 500, which is more than we did last season. So, All right, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see some more good stuff from me. And I will stop rambling now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.